I want to talk through Herefish testing best practices tips and also show you exactly how you can accomplish it inside of Herefish. So the first tip is to spot check your list that you're creating. So the QA, QC, kind of a random number of records that are on the list, look them up in the database, make sure it's exactly who or what you want included in the automation. If it's not, you're gonna to have to go in and adjust your list criteria. To accomplish this inside of Herefish, in the list section, you can do this view candidates uh, under or whatever entity that you're searching or, or list that you're creating submissions jobs placements etc you can click that view candidates button that will pop you out to the exact people that are on this list so you'll get a, a read out of them if you click the hyperlink this uh, blue hyperlink here it'll code to the here fish contact card where you can get an overview of information that's associated with the person the uh, bull icon will port you directly to their record inside of Bullhorn. And you also have the ability to export this to CSV file if you want to manipulate it in some other way and check it at scale. So that's a great first way to make sure that your list and your audience is on the right path. The second thing you can do is utilize test records. So you know, even if you're inside of um, you know, a you know, your here fish environment, right? You probably want to run either yourself. You can create yourself as a record, or you can create some just random test candidate and client contact records. You can even do submissions, placements, and jobs as well. My go-to was a, a tester, McTesterson, as far as a name. But this can be a great way to run someone through a live automation, understand exactly what it's doing without actually releasing it to someone in your database to make sure everything is kind of good to go. One other thing that you can do here if you want to do kind of a large group of individuals is you can utilize this kind of parameter on the end of an email address if you want to have kind of multiple records flowing through. You do have to have unique email addresses uh, inside of Herefish, although you could bring them in um, and they just get flagged as duplicates. So you have to make sure on your automations that you'd allow duplicates in. But this can be a, a good way to get unique test candidates in, but still have everything flow to the same email. This is a quick little tip and a little a way of best practice so you can make that happen. So the next is you want to make sure that you test your communications inside of Herefish, utilizing the native testing features that are in for surveys, notifications, text messages, and emails. So this should be familiar to, uh, to you all, but we'll just go in here just to double check and make sure. Uh, when you're inside of an email or a text message or a notification, you're going to see the send test option up in the top right corner. If you click it, you'll be able to send yourself uh, an, an email. You can pick someone to merge in. If you want to pick a specific record or submission, placement, etc. cetera. Uh, if you leave this blank, as the help text here explains, we will grab somebody randomly, put them into uh, the, the uh, kind of the test so you can see what the merge tags are going to populate. And we also have this merge tag preview here, which will show you exactly uh, kind of the merge tags that you're utilizing, be able to pull that in. So, and then this is available, I'll show you the text message, test feature as well, but on all communications, email, text, notifications, you're going to be able, that send test feature is gonna look exactly the same up in that top right corner. So make sure you look for it. And also in the email, you can, you can get a preview functionality of what it's gonna look like, but from testing perspective, Oftentimes you want to actually send the message out, make sure it's functioning exactly the way you want it to. So that's best practice tip number three. Number four is if, and this is really helpful for kind of larger organizations, especially if you want to do kind of a staggered rollout of Herefish. So you have either some, you know, some recruiters that you're going to, kind of do a pilot group with and then expand it later once it's proven successful or if you want to limit it to certain branches 
or we just want to start small and be able to keep really a, a close close eye on uh, kind of impact and results and then expand it out later. You can use a concept called a, a master list concept where you specify that small control group or pilot group that you want to run through or you want to utilize for all your automations. And then in the list area for all those automations, you reference the master list. And then when you're ready to expand your use beyond the pilot or add additional people to it, you only have to edit the master list. You don't have to edit each individual automation again. So it can really save you a lot of time, especially if you're doing multiple edits. So let's show you how that gets done here. So for example, you know, you can do this kind of master list. You can either do owner or branch. Those are probably the two most common uh, things that I've seen done. But if you have some other way to group your pilot group, you can of course do it. You can create a search criteria around it. So this would be my master list. And then say that I'm using this list inside of an automation. I have whatever criteria I want to flow through the automation. And then I just make sure that I reference that the person is also in the master list. And then if I wanted to add additional people, I would just need to go into the master list, make my edits there, and it would naturally flow to every automation that is including the master list as a criteria. So that is the small kind of pilot group idea. It also be, can be powerful. If something does not work exactly the way you're thinking it should, um, I want to show you kind of the best ways to get to the bottom of, of kind of understanding exactly how the system is operating. So there's two, I think, best ways that might not be readily available or, or you might not be aware of. just want to show you. And this is honestly where I start my troubleshooting typically as well. If you go to a specific contact record inside of uh, the database and on the bottom left there'll be an additional details as you scroll all the way down i'll just show you this here so we have this is the contact card you can see all this information if we scroll down we'll see this additional details so we can come in here and this right hand side this full history this is a treasure chest of troubleshooting information you'll get everything that's happened for this individual from the beginning of time and it will be time stamped you'll be able to see all the lists and automations and automation steps that have happened so this can be a really great way to figure out what's happening that you might not be understanding you know, get a complete picture of things that are occurring and also going to be a great way to kind of jot down uh, kind of troubleshooting things or your, kind of your evidence so that when you report it to us, if there is a bug, or if there is something that's not working, we'll be able to troubleshoot it much faster if you've gone through kind of the steps of, of doing your due diligence on this side of things uh, from the get-go. So that's one aspect. Another is when you're inside of the, uh, the automation area, if you click in the top right corner of any automation step, you'll see a show advanced stats button. And this will pop this up for each step that's inside of an automation. And if you click any of the groups here that are hyperlinked, it will pop you to those people and give you a timestamp of when they completed that individual step. So again, a really powerful ally as you're troubleshooting information, you can get that kind of detail. You can find out what exactly is happening if someone's gone through a step, hasn't gone through a step, where is somebody in an automation? You, know, you can look all the way through that and get an idea exactly of what is occurring. And that's the best. That's the end of the, the best practices, kind of testing tips. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out. Let us know. Happy automating.